Hi, I'm Connie Sue. Let's applique. In this video, I want to show you how to make my three-dimensional flower. It's one I designed and I call it a gathered petal flower. And the reason should be obvious. The base of each petal is gathered. Another characteristic of this particular flower is that each petal is absolutely smooth. No gathers, no puckers, no pleats along the edges of the petal, only at the base. Okay, let's get started and I'll show you how to make this. Oh, by the way, this project that we're working on is a quilt that I have designed called Anne's Lyrical Christmas, just in case you were wondering. Okay, let's get started. I have got a one and three quarter inch square of flower fabric. In this case, it's a nice bright red for this Christmas quilt. I have threaded my basting needle with white thread, a good contrast so it shows up against the red. I put a knot at one end. By the way, I probably should clip off this little extra here. There we go. Get rid of that. Okay. And I am ready to run or to make a running stitch across one end of my one and three quarter inch square. I'm going to come in three eighths of an inch from one side. I'm going to put the running stitch in and I'm going to end three eighths of an inch from the other side. I'm going to do this a seam allowance down, which would be a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to come in about a quarter of an inch. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and, oopsie, let me take it just a little bit, and do a nice little running stitch across the base. I'm going to stop 3 eighths of an inch from the other end and just pull my thread through. Okay, I'm going to pull those gathers up. I'm going to lay <laughs> this little petal on its side where I have access to these, where the thread comes out. I'm going to pull it up and make a knot right there. Now, this knot needs to be big enough to keep from pulling through the applique fabric. So I'm going to lop it over three or even four times to be sure that that knot is big enough that it won't pull through. Ask me how I know this. Yeah, experience is an awfully good teacher. Okay, now let's see what we've got. Ooh, how nice. A nice gathers. We're ready to place this on our project. I'll set it aside for the moment and I'll get my project out here. Here it is. I've got a spot where I need another flower. Let's look at that. Ah, there we go. It's Can you see I have traced it? Of course, I do back basting, and this technique is used with back basting. So I have traced the flower on the wrong side of my background fabric. And we're now ready to put one petal in place. Doesn't matter which of them. I'm, we'll start down here just because it's close and handy. I'm going to use some large pins because they show up well in the video. You can use smaller ones if you like. I'm going to place one pin across the base of the petal. That is, I'm going to go in one side and out the other right on those spots. I'm going to take another pin, put it on one side directly on the pencil line, and come out the point so I know where that is, and I'll put another one on this side, once again directly on the pencil line. That'll give me a general idea of the location of the petal. I flip it over and you can see this is the base. This will be the center of my flower when I'm done. The base of this first petal is over or right at this pin. I'm going to take my gathered square and I'm going to lay it so that the gathers here are directly over that pin. See that? 
when I have it in place, I'll hold it down and I'm going to put a pin at the opposite edge. Then I'm going to flip to the back and I'm going to remove these pins that I've used for the placement. Flip back to the front and I'm going to very, very carefully smooth out, pull, stretch, whatever, this fabric so that there are no puckers, no pleats, no gathers. It's nice and smooth along the edge and put a pin in for that. Do the same on the other side. I want it smoothed out nice and smooth. And I'm going to go ahead and put a pin in that. Now we're ready to baste our petal. I will need to take my pin, excuse me, my needle, and kind of push it through. I'm just going to stick it here for the moment. I don't know exactly where it's going to go. I'll flip it over and find out from there. Okay, I want, oh, I almost hit it. Look at I want my needle to come out directly at the base on one side of the petal. See, here's the base and here's one side of the petal. I'll go ahead and pull the thread through. By the way, it is still attached. I didn't clip it, so it's still attached to my square. Go ahead then at this point and take out this one pin. Now for the next step, I am going to be feeling with my fingers between my finger and my thumb. And I will feel constantly feeling the applique fabric to be sure it is nice and smooth. I don't want any puckers or pleats or gathers. Uh, no imperfections, I want it nice and smooth. When I have it nice and smooth, I'm gonna go ahead and baste. You might, I happen to use the quick prep stitch. You may use what you like. When you get to a pin, you'll need to take it out on the front so that it doesn't interfere with your basting. As I said, I like my, my uh, quick prep stitch because it produces a line that it is almost continuous on the front. And I love that look. Makes it real easy to applique. <clears throat> I come out the point, I'm going to turn, I'm going to come down the other side. At this point, I'm going to take out that pin on the back side and get it out of there so that I can do this smoothly. Once again, feeling with my fingers to be sure that I have a nice smooth edge where I'm going to be basting. The fabric, the applique fabric is nice and flat. Okay. I get down here, I'm going to come right out the base again, and I'm going to take and put a knot in it. Um, this is under a little bit of tension. I don't always knot my basting threads, but this one I will want to knot so that uh, it remains nice and firm. And maybe just a nice big knot so I can see it. We'll loop it over three times. There we go. Yeah. Let me get my scissors out. And we'll come in and clip that. Okay. Let's flip to the other side and see what we have. Oh, there we've got it. Pretty nice looking, isn't it? There we go. Can you see that? Am I close enough? Okay. Nice and smooth all around here. Nice and smooth on the opposite edge, but gathered across the petals. Now is a good time to check and be sure of the placement of the base. I like to take that big pin again and flip to the back side. Where is it here? Don't want to lose it. I'm going to take, and just as I did to begin, I'm going to put the pin down through one edge, one corner, and come up the other corner. And this is directly across the base. I have done it so that the pin, I pushed all the way down deep, so that when I flip it to this side, you'll see that the pin is directly above my basting threads. 
Now it isn't exactly perfect on this end, but it's close enough. We want it in this general location, so I'd say this is good to go. Let's go ahead and take that testing pin out. It is now time to take and clip this out. We will take our, I like using serrated scissors for this, it makes a beautiful edge. Oopsie, I'm trying to do this through the camera and it's just not the best way maybe to do it. I like to leave about an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch for my seam allowance. I would normally either at this point in time stitch it to the point and then clip down the other side or for me because I I do a point with extra fabric if I do decide to cut out the whole thing I'm going to leave some extra fabric at the point at this that I will use and deal with when I make the point Looking good. Let's see what we've got now. We'll turn it the way we would need it for um, our applique. There we go. Get it all straightened out nicely. And now it's ready to applique. I think you can see it even a little bit better now. How nice and smooth this is here and here. No gathers or puckers. I'll get you started on the applique. I'm not going to applique the whole thing now. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to clip on the seam side of my knot that holds the gathers. I'm going to come over and I'm going to clip the second stitch, not the first one, the second stitch. Okay, and it looks like I am missing I was missing my turner. I grabbed it I'm going to very, very gently lift this first stitch out of the, the background and flip it under. Oops, excuse me, bump that. A little jarring, isn't it, when it happens, okay? Now I can see my basting stitch right here is directly on the fold, so I know I have turned on the under the proper seam allowance and I'm ready to begin my applique. I can then take my thread I, and a very fine needle, I'm using a, a size, oh you know I don't know if it's a 10 or a 12 but it'd be one of those, very fine needle and away I go. I'm ready to applique. I'm very careful to take that stitch out when I come to it when I move over here and I'm ready to do the next one, I don't clip the first, I clip the second. Lift this stitch gently, turn it under, and I can see exactly where it's going to be. That should get you started on your applique. If you have any other questions about how to applique or how to back baste, you can find those on DVDs that I have available on my website. I have two of them. My website is appleblossomquilts.com. You're sure welcome to come out and come over and check out my site and check out my DVDs. They are available for purchase. Thanks so much for joining me for this video today. I hope you enjoy your gathered petaled flower. Thank you.